the greatest American alive. Jesus Christ washed feet. What must I do? The greatest American alive. I'm so sick and tired of folks being disingenuous. It's a nasty experience when you see people be disingenuous. They won't tell the truth to get no power. No, they will not. Nasty, you hear me? The Lord told me to bring my butt outside and come out here and get in this fog, yes? And I said, man, it's so beautiful outside. So amazingly beautiful. Gotta duck the spider webs, you hear me? <laughs> out here I come by the bayou. If I tried to show you, you wouldn't be able to see. But out there on the bayou, man, there's birds out there, there's life out there, and you can't see nothing out there because of all this beautiful fog the Lord has given us today. When I walked up, the gray heron was outside, and the gray heron didn't want to talk to me. The gray heron said, I got to fly, my brother. He spread his wings and called ghosts. Can you hear the cockle doodle do from the birds as they say, wake up, good morning. How are you doing? I wanted to come and meet the sun. I wanted to come talk to the sun. The son of God wanted to talk to God. And so I wanted to meet the sun as the sun came up on the sunrise. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Have you ever had your face shaken? What happened in your life for you to almost lose your faith in your God? And when I say lose your faith in your God, what almost caused you to lose your faith in yourself? Because belief in self is damn near separation from your creator. Because if you don't know who you are, then how can you possibly talk to God? This morning, I woke up with God on my heart. I woke up with peace on my heart. I wanted to talk to God, you know. In a world of, of spirituality and everyone claims to be spiritual, they put their they they hand up and they make the proclamation and they say, yes, I am spiritual. <laughs> I was having a conversation with my creator and I told my creator that I wanted to be a living ambassador of love. I wanted to be of service. Jesus Christ washed feet and I just said I wanted to emulate greatness. What can be more of service than humbling yourself to wash someone's crusty toes? Are you listening? Because some, some of us got some messed up feet, you know? I ain't had no pedicure in a minute. I don't really take care of my feet that good. But to imagine that Jesus Christ, the Son of God Almighty, decided to wash feet. And so I told myself, man, I wanted to be of service. And as I got older, my language progressed. And so then Project Daddy said, I want to be a living ambassador of love. This is the language that I'm using now. Yes, I was called to do all types of work in the church. Making a public profession to say that I wanted to be a living ambassador of love, to say that I wanted to be of service, all of a sudden the floodgates of opportunity, they opened up and I was allowed to see the world. It started small. It started off with Child Evangelism Fellowship, CEF. I did this over the summers from the age of 14 to 18. Would go out to inner city communities apartment buildings and teach five-day Bible clubs about the love of Jesus Christ yes when I got into these communities and I saw how impoverished they were I could tell them stories or more importantly I could stop and give these young people my time I saw so much trauma I saw so much hurt I saw so much pain and if I could in an hour or in 30 minutes take this child away from the, the abuse and the pain and the living in absolute poverty that I would just show them as much love as I possibly could. I was just like, Lord, use me to be an ambassador of love. And this journey, this exploration to be of service is taking me to some places. I really wanted, I really wanted to enjoy my work for the church. But at the end of the day, that's just what it was, work for the church. There's a whole business based on faith. And your pastor, your deacons, the whole institution is built on you believing one specific ideology. It doesn't matter if there's any other evidence to prove any other power in your life. Your actual lived experience has no value when it comes to that institution because that institution is there to protect their business model. And their business model is you believing that they are the only way to get to God. We speak old cliches and we never ever internalize how much power words actually have. We just say things and we don't actually expect the thing in which we say to really come to fruition. We just be talking. And I know a lot of times Project Daddy was just talking and now when I stop talking, I start listening and all of a sudden the whole world looks different, you hear me? 
So as a young person, once I started engaging in this dialogue and I started saying things like, I want to talk to God. When I started saying things like, I want to be an ambassador of love. When I start asking for God to put me in a position to be of service, when I say that I that Jesus Christ washed feet, and I say now I want to wash feet, when I start asking to wash feet, and I get put in position to be of service, now all of a sudden, I can't believe what's happening. All of a sudden, I can't believe what's happening. I'm like, wow, prayer works. When I ask you when and how did you lose your faith, it's because I know exactly when I lost my faith. I know what I saw. I know how much it hurt deep in my heart for all of a sudden this thing that I believed my entire life to be shaken. When I asked my creator and I said that I want to be an ambassador of love, I didn't expect that to take me to Africa. As a 17 year old boy, I didn't expect me saying I want to live my truth. I want to live my faith. I didn't expect all of a sudden God to say, well, here you go. Let's go to Africa. Let's go to the Ivory Coast and let's test your faith. Let's see if you're willing to live the thing in which you espouse. Are you really about that life? Do you really want to go and be of service? We have to make all these preparations to go and be of service in Africa. We got to get shots. We're taking classes on how to deal with the people, how to engage, the type of food we're going to have. Man, I'm so excited about this experience. I'm black. On this mission trip to Africa, Project Daddy is the only black person that's going on this trip. So I'm super excited. I'm like, yes, prayer works. But what this trip means to me doesn't mean the same thing to everybody on the trip with me. I'm with people who don't look like me. So their experience is not I'm going to meet another human being that's just as valuable as me. Nah, I'm finna go meet some impoverished people. I'm finna go meet some less than people. Some people who are not quite on my stature. This is how we see the world, yes? I didn't even know that I had an elitist point of view until I find myself in the Ivory Coast and I'm surrounded by children who are impoverished and to be 17 and to be so humbled to say that I want to be of service and when you are surrounded by people who have less than you could ever imagine having what can you do what can you give hell I was poor economically I couldn't give them anything financially so I was a jock yes and so as a young boy I was just I mean I was strong I had muscles and so the little children would line up and so as the little children from like five, six years old, five or six years old little people. They'd come up to me and I'd grab them, I'd grab them and I'd toss them into the air and then I'd catch them. And that's the only game I could play. I wanted to show these children how to love. I just wanted to show these children that I cared. AIDS never crossed my mind. Disease never crossed my mind. Cleanliness never crossed my mind. I saw children who wanted to play and all I wanted to do was play. I have been trained in this way to show love, to tell stories, to be engaged with these wonderful young people. And then as I'm playing, I look over and I see some of my peers off in the distance and they're putting on gloves. I said, why are you putting on gloves? I don't say this out loud. I said it in my mind as I'm tossing these children in the air. I'm asking why in the world are you putting on gloves to engage with these wonderful people? And then I knew this wasn't about love. You didn't want to show them love. You wanted to come and receive the blessing of looking as if you're showing love. That's when my faith was shaken. On days like today, when I'm engaged in actual dialogue with my creator, then I can listen and move my feet out of love and comprehension and understanding out of duty, right? To know that it's my duty to show and exhibit love, not by trying to be safe. And so if I ask you, have you ever had your faith shaken? I have. And I had my faith shaken in the most monumental way at a time where I thought that my faith was supposed to grow exponentially. I'm over there with people who I thought had more faith than me, who are more deserving than me. I met the most incredible artist named Moses in the Ivory Coast. He was like a hybrid of a Kurt Franklin uh, mixed with a prince or something. He was like an indigenous superstar. He was incredible, yes. This man could play the piano, he could play the guitar. And I was having a conversation with Moses one day and Moses told me he just, he just walked with so much joy. He had so much vibrance and vitality in his spirit. I asked Moses because I saw where Moses lived. I saw his shack, I saw what he called a home. And I asked Moses, I said, man, how can you have so much joy? What makes you so happy? And he said, brother, 
I am happy to be alive. And that hit me in such a way, it knocked me out, it knocked me back in such a way, it was such a compelling statement of strength to be happy to be alive. To, to, to live gratitude is to touch heaven, to be thankful, to be thankful, to say, oh my goodness, I'm so thankful, to be obedient, to listen. To be thankful to be alive is a concept that most of us, we don't even, we can't even wrap our minds around it because we have so many gadgets. We have phones and tablets and Wi-Fi, 5G and shit. We have information on tap. And for some reason, we won't engage in life water. We won't engage in the conversations to save our lives. I'm trying to tell you. Going to Africa was one of the most humbling experiences of my life because I knew that I didn't deserve anything. I saw people who had greater faith than me. I saw people who had spirits that were much greater than mine. I saw amazing human beings who were not valued the way they should be valued, and I knew that I was so undeserving. I knew that everything that I had in my life came from grace. I did not deserve it. For some reason, my creator said that you deserve this opportunity to grow up in a place called the United States of America. And so when I say the greatest American alive, the greatest American alive. I'm saying how fortunate you are to be here, how fortunate, what a miracle it is for us to get to know each other and have a relationship. It's a miracle. To be grateful, right? My favorite quote in the whole entire world is to live gratitude is to touch heaven. To live gratitude is to touch heaven. And so when I say things like I want to talk to God, when I say things like I want to I want to touch heaven, I know the words have power. I understand them. And so I want to physically touch heaven. I want to actually engage in dialogue with God. And having conversations with you helps me get closer to that goal. The greatest thing I've learned on this journey of love is to be obedient. This morning, my creator said, put your shoes on and go. And so I did. I wanted to catch the sunrise, but on a day that's so foggy as today, you can't see the sun behind the fog, but I was obedient. I listened. And being obedient has taken me around the world. I've seen things I never thought that I could ever see. The most important thing that I've learned is the only thing that matters is relationships. And I'm trying to have genuine, authentic relationships with human people, but they're so disconnected. They're so disengaged. And they're so disingenuous and man, I'm losing hope. And so when I call you the greatest American alive, it's because I want you to understand how important you are. The place in which you live, the resources that you have, the blessings that have been bestowed upon you. Man, you have no reason but to be grateful. Oh, how thankful I am for today. Oh, how thankful I am for you, yes? Can you hear the rooster crow in the distance? If you're listening, that's God talking. The moment you start to be obedient and you start listening, then all of a sudden you start hearing God talking. So many people want to think that manifestation is like magic or something. That faith in God is magic or something. Nah, man, it's duty, it's responsibility, it's diligence, right? It's being obedient. It's doing the things that need to be done. It's washing feet, it's being of service. It's emulating the behavior of Jesus Christ. If you can hear the sound of the rooster crow, Maybe you can hear the voice of God. Are you listening? All of a sudden, when the beautiful world all around me starts talking, and you have no clue that God's talking directly to you because you have not put yourself in a position to receive all the blessings that God has in store for you. I know that you can get lost with words, and so when I say the Almighty Creator, when I say the Supreme Artist, you get confused. But when I look at the world around me, when I see all this beauty, when I hear the sounds, when I hear these sounds, I know how big God is. I know how amazing this experience is. I know what this means to me. Right now, I wanted to, I wanted to catch the sunrise, and even through the fog, the sun is just beaming down on me. And how thankful I am. To live gratitude is to touch heaven. Prayer works. I don't want to just talk, I want to listen. I'm so thankful that my God told me to be obedient, to put my shoes on and to come out here to experience everything that's wonderful and beautiful. And so if you want to manifest, you have to ask the right things. Dear Lord, will you give me the ability to experience everything that's wonderful and beautiful? Will you please put me in a position to be of service? And then all of a sudden, your heart opens up and love floods in. And now you can be an ambassador of love. I get excited, man. Prayer works. This is the monologue of a free person. You should try being free too. The greatest American alive.
The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.